Hi everybody, how are you? How's the day? I'm Dr. Shirtful Halim and I'm here to give you some advice or you can, you can call tips about how to take good preparations in medicine to cover the final professional examination. So I myself passed MBBS from Dhaka Medical College in 2014 January and I completed my internship just a few days ago and I think my advice can help you to master medicine in an easier way. I mean, there are all kind of ways there. So you have a lot of books to go through, a lot of materials. So what should, what will help you to get good marks or to get passed through the final professional exam? I will, I will focus on those. So in final professional exam uh, for medicine, you have this written part and this the viva part, and also you have an OSP. So I will, um, I will first consider about the viva because it's the most dreaded part. So in the viva part, you have the board viva and you have the clinical. So you have the long cases and the short cases. So uh, let's first talk about the long cases and short cases, what to do about them. So for long and short cases, the best resources that I think and most people think is the books written by Dr. Abdullah, Abdullah sir. So the short cases and long cases both are written by him and those are very, very fantastic books. Actually, I don't know how people pass the final prop before those books. These are great resources and you, you must study them. You must study them. You must study them for multiple times, especially the important topics. So let's, let's start talking about the short cases. What should you study from Abdullah? So you start studying from the first chapter, focus on the most common parts of the general examination like how to look for anemia, jaundice, edema, clubbing, etc. So those are very important. So focus on those and also examination of the lymph nodes. Then let's go to the systems. So you see, let's start from the head. In the nervous system, the most common long ca short cases that are given in the final prof are the cranial nerves. So you have the three, four, three, four, and six. So those are examined together and also Seventh cranial nerve. I think this is the most important cranial nerve that you will have. Some of you will have, must have in the final exam. So three, four, six, and the seven. Those are the most common cranial nerves commonly given in the final exam. And some people may get the ninth cranial nerve, but it's a bit uncommon. So what else is the examination of the lower limbs, especially the motor examination of the lower limbs. Some can have the total examination or some teacher may ask you just to do the jerks and reflexes. So you do the knee jerk, the ankle jerk, and the plantar response. So some, some people do get this only. And the sensory examination is a bit uncommon, but it's better if you get prepared for the sensory exam. Remember the dermatomes for specific points. Okay, so have your own point of a single dermatome. Okay, next, let's talk about the respiratory system. So for the respiratory system, the most common examinations that are given are the pleural effusions. So you are given a case, the teacher will ask you to percuss and maybe to auscultate and preferably from back. So you must learn to examine the chest from back, that's very important. Inspection and palpation parts are not commonly given but you have to practice this way. But in the exam you will have the percussion and auscultation part. So pleural effusion is the most important case and not a short case portion of the respiratory system and you have to study other cases uh, for the short case virus like the pneumonia you have to study it you have to study uh, like pneumothorax what you can find in pneumothorax or what you can find in pneumonia so consider those as subsidiaries but the main thing major thing is pleural effusion focus on that and its findings next let's go to the cardiovascular system and the cardiovascular system uh, their mo most common examination is the examination of the precordium, especially examination, I mean, the auscultation of the precordium. So you must learn what are the areas of auscultation for different valves, specifically, and uh, what are the common murmurs that can be present, or what are the common abnormalities of the heart sound themselves uh, in the common diseases, palpable diseases, like uh, you have the mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation, which are the most common valvular disease worldwide. And so it's also very important for your exam. And also the aortic stenosis, it's, uh, it's not a very uncommon thing, it's also a common thing. So those three valvular diseases are most likely to appear in your exam. So study them well, especially the murmurs. 
So like, like uh, the MS, you have a mid-diastolic murmur. The AMR, you have a pan-systolic murmur, which radiate to the axilla. You have aldis stenosis. In aldis stenosis, you have a murmur, which is injection systolic and radiates to your neck. So those are simple basic things. And also learn how to examine them properly. I mean, learn from Abdullah Sir's book. It's written very clearly how to examine the murmur of MS, how to examine the murmur of MR, or how to examine the murmur of AS. So let's go to the abdomen next. So in the ab abdomen, I did have a case of abdomen, and my case was a patient of ascites, and I was told, or I was asked to examine the patient, especially do the shifting dullness. So that's the most important examination for the abdomen. Do the shifting dullness multiple times. Sometimes it gets confused. So don't be confused. Practice it a lot. And sometimes you can be given a, sh a shifting uh, fluid thrill. And um, in some cases, people are asked to do, do the examination of the liver, I mean the palpation of the liver, or maybe palpation of the spleen. Those, those will cover the most cases. Next, uh, the musculoskeletal system short cases are not commonly given. So those things, those short cases are the most likely short cases to appear in your final professional exam. Now let's talk about the long cases. So in the long cases part, let's start from the central nervous system. So you can have a patient of stroke with or without aspiration pneumonia. Then you can have a patient of paraplegia which can be spastic or flaccid. So if it's flaccid, the most likely cause will be Guillain-Barre syndrome or if it is sp sp spastic, it can be due to multiple uh, due to multiple sclerosis, due to multiple myeloma, due to secondary in the bone, or maybe due to transverse myelitis. So those are the most common differentials that should come to your mind of when you uh, have these long cases. Uh, about respiratory system, the most common long cases given are related to the obstructive diseases. So we can have a patient of COPD, or you can have a patient of asthma. And other diseases are most commonly manifested with pleural effusion. So you can have a case of pleural effusion. So the differentials for a long case of pleural effusion will be TB, can be cancer if the patient is older, or can be pneumonia if the patient is younger or older, doesn't matter. Okay, next. Uh, you can also have uh, bronchiectasis as a case. Uh, some of my friends, uh, one of my friends with bronchiectasis case, but this is not commonly given. But study it. Studying is good. Knowing something is good. Next, let's go to the cardiovascular system. In the cardiovascular system, the most common cases are short cases, not long cases. So forget about the long cases of cardiovascular system. Abdomen. So in abdomen, the GI long cases are not commonly given. It's especially for the surgery part. For the hepatobiliary system, you have actually four long cases. So the most common long case is the chronic liver disease, which can be compensated, but most likely will be decompensated in your patient. You can have a patient of hepatocellular carcinoma, most likely the patient will have CN CLD also. So hepatocellular carcinoma on top of CLD. But in some cases you can also have a case of frank viral hepatitis or maybe also liver abscess. Let's go to the regenerative system or renal system. So in the renal system you don't get any adult cases actually in the final professional exam. You'll get some childs who will present with general edema or only puffiness of face, hematuria, something like that. So you'll get the cases of AGN or nephronic syndrome. You have to differentiate between them. And also the hematopoietic or lymphoidic system, the most common cases actually don't come from adult medicine. It comes from the pediatrics. So we can have a thalassemia patient, most likely a beta thalassemia major, patient with hyperosclerosis megaly and pallor, or you can have a patient of leukemia, a patient of anemia, fever, bleeding, and also lymph nodes and liver spleen, also bone tenderness. So those are the cases that will be commonly given. And also, in, in, you can, some of you can get a case of lymphoma, but it's less common than the other cases. Especially thalassemia will be the major portion to cover. So study thalassemia well and also leukemias and then lastly lymphoma. Okay, next. Uh, next let's talk about the uh, bone fiber portion. So for the bone fibers, if you cover the short cases and the long cases well, it will cover a lot of bone fibers. So what else you need to do, considering the short case and long case, the short case and long case you read from the Abdullah Sir's book, you also study them from Davidson's. So that will bring a good a comprehensive knowledge about them. And also, uh, let's talk about the uh, written portion. So for the written portion, you have to solve all the questions of the last seven to eight years. Please 
if you can, make a note and uh, please solve them from Davidson and also take help from Abdullah Sar's book. So it will uh, cover uh, many parts, many important parts of the Davidson. Okay. So let's talk with the OSP. For the OSP, the best resource can be Abdullah Sar's new edition, I mean the fifth edition of the short case. It has a lot of ECGs, X-rays and also data interpretation and some cases also, some figures, pictorials. So that will be a very valuable resource. If you can, please uh, solve the previous year's OSPI questions. I think that's all from me today. If you have any questions or any more suggestions needed, or if I miss something, please do give feedback. And if you can, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Ta-ta.